All right. Um, <clears throat> we will continue from where we stop on A to Z of export business financing. And today we'll be looking at A to Z of export business financing part 14. We've had 13 edition already. And this morning we'll be doing the 14th edition. Um, this program is from the Internet Impact Trade Academy and it's called the Import Export Platform Facebook Live. It comes up every weekday 8 a.m and 6 p.m so we'll come up in the morning and the evening 8 a.m and 6 p.m respectively we'll be discussing a lot of factors that are responsible for reason why people are not getting financing for their export project and we've been talking about things that people must do if they are going to be able to secure the most needed and desired export financing from commercial banks by the way, this program is not just for exporters, it's also for investors in export business, and more importantly, for the banks that is financing the export project. Yesterday more afternoon, we spoke about, um, yesterday evening, we spoke about quality control, and in the afternoon, we spoke about purchase order. But today, being Monday, We'll be discussing return on investment. Return on investment. And we're talking about the fact that return on investment is very, very critical in getting financing for your export project. Informal joy. Thank you very much for joining. Good morning. It's very, very important for your export project. If you are going to be successful in your export project, you must be mindful of your return on investment. You need to also understand that for some product, return on investment can be quite high. For some, they are really very low. There's something about some product in Nigeria. I wonder why people are still doing it, but probably they have other reasons. For example, some agro commodities like cocoa, for example. Cocoa is very expensive. People spend billions of naira every year exporting cocoa, but they also make so little. Some make as low as 5%, some 10%. I'm not sure if anybody is in up to 15% in cocoa in Nigeria, unless the person is the one planting it. But if it's a trader in cocoa, they do large volume, someone will do transaction of 10 billion and make 1 billion. So it's volume driven for, for business to now become very profitable or to be reasonable rather in terms of profit. So a number of goods, so items, so, I mean, not all items have, of course, the same. Uh, profitability, so many other factors are responsible for what kind of profit you expect to get. A lot of factors are responsible. And some of those factors we'll be discussing this morning, so that if you're coming to export business, you take note of those factors and work around them to be able to significantly reduce the chance of not being profitable in your export project. Return on investment is a very important aspect of any business. And exportation is not an exception. The goal of a business is to make profit, but the purpose of a business is to create value. If the profit is not being achieved, if you're not making profit at all, and it's going to many years, then you probably want to consider an alternative. So it's very important for the, for the sustainability. To the extent that you are not making profit at the few, first few transactions does not mean the business is not viable. You're just going to the learning curve. But if it's not profitable consistently, maybe you want to consider another business. You know, there is this saying that don't give up on the business, but you can give up on the product. And that I learned from the book, Tied to Build to Last. Don't give up on the business, but you can give up on the product. So you might want to give up on the product and then do another product. Because the sustainability of the business is dependent likely on profitability. Because bills are going to be paid. Return on investment helps the exporter to take an investment decision and help the bank to also take a financing decision. An investment decision is taken based on this. A financing decision is also taken based on this. Return on investment, very important, very critical. 
very important and critical for the survival of an export business. Generally, export business cycle range from three weeks to less or less to about three months or more, depending on the item being exported, the volume of the shipment, the agreed trade terms. The item you are exporting, because of the sourcing of that item, the volume that you are shipping, because that also depends likely on availability of truck, availability of vessel, availability of a lot of, a lot of factors, and the agreed trade terms. By trade terms, I mean who is bearing the risk and cost to different points. Because if you are bearing some additional cost by virtue of the trade terms you agreed, instead of you have the option of delivering the goods to a, a terminal not far from your warehouse, but you are delivering the goods to a terminal at the port, or even delivering goods to a terminal in the importer's country, all this increase your cost and of course affect the return on investment for the business. So duration varies on a number of factors. And duration, of course, significantly also impact on the profit at the end of the day. So the return on investment on an export transaction could range from as low as 5, 10, 15% to as much as 50% or even more. So as much as 50% or even more. Amuta Andrew, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. However, beside the duration, the return on investment likely depends on a number of factors that the bank need to pay close attention to. Beside the duration of the transaction, there are other factors that affect the return on investment and the bank need to pay attention to that. Remember, we are discussing return on investment and how this affects financing. A bank will be interested in financing a transaction where the return on investment is great. Because then they will be profitable, you will be profitable. If they are profitable because they will charge their interest and you are not profitable, a number of banks will not be going to show interest in that transaction because it's be as if you are working for them. And they need your commitment, they need sustainability and ongoing going concern of that business. So they want to get involved in a business where both parties are benefiting. You are benefiting and they are benefiting. Taiwo Ada Gary J, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. So having a good understanding of your cost, for example, because we're going to be discussing cost element of your cost, for example, that likely, likely, likely affect how profitable the business is. In fact, some people um, incur some costs that are unnecessary. Now, they are not aware of the implication of those costs because they don't even know how profitable, you know, for example, people will come and say, I want to export. I need a product that is in high demand. I need a product that is very profitable. I need a product with low risk. <laughs> low risk, high demand, pro very profitable, and short transaction cycle. And I said, if that is available, everybody will be doing it. And that means if everybody go into it, that will crash the price. So that will crash the profit because the cost will go up. So apart from duration, here are some of the things that you need to look at and the bank need to look at, especially as it relates to the determination of the uh, return on investment. Remember, one of the major things that need to be looked at is cost, actually. Cost. Cost. One of them also is position of the buyer in the supply chain or position of the exporter in the supply chain also the commodity season the commodity season also the quality of the item the quality of the item and then the product to be exported itself all these contribute one way or the other to the return on investment let me take the first one the product being exported the product being exported. Some products are very profitable. 
mainly because of high demand or low cost of production. So products are very profitable, mainly due to high demand and low cost of production, while others are not very profitable due to low demand and high cost of production. Ogumuroti Chair, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. So, if you're going into export business, you need to ask yourself which product. You know, we've discussed um, handling five P's of export business challenges. Handling five P's of export business challenges. And one of the things you need to look at is product. 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 Product is extremely important. If you are doing commodity, be rest assured that your, 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 your profitability is already determined. The local suppliers sometimes have an idea of how much you are going to sell. So they already map and give you an idea of how much they want to sell to you. And that's the challenge of commodities. The buyer also determine the price. The buyer tells you, this is the amount we are going to buy this item. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You have to buy at that price. But you know what? When you add value to your product, you determine the price. When you add value to your product, you determine the price. I'm trying to show you some product this morning. Look at this product. This is plantain chips. The regular plantain chips you see in Nigeria cost about 100 naira. This plantain chip, I think it's sold for 150 or 200. Now, if this person was exporting only raw plantain, the person buying the plantain chips will let him know how much they are willing to buy. If they are going to export plantain, plantain, buyer out there is going to tell you how much they are willing to buy. Reasonably. Because if they are not buying, you don't have anybody to sell to. Especially if it's a product that in your country, very, very few people are buying it and adding value. And this is just laying credence to the need why we need to add value to products in Nigeria. Adding value to your product, you can't compare it at all. You command price, you determine your pricing, you can reasonably Especially when you have a unique product, a great product. Imagine a plantain cheese package like this. This is made in Nigeria, by the way. It's made in, can you imagine? This is made somewhere in Nazarawa State. Nazarawa State. Nimbu, the oil, plantain crisps. Look at another one, pineapple. This is pineapple. It's called dry pineapple, made by sax fruit. Also made in Nigeria, in Lagos. And this is pap. Okay. These are value-added products. Because they are value-added products, you increase your chance of getting it sold at a very reasonable price. At a very reasonable price. Why? Because of added value. So if you are into fashion, for example, or you are into uh, the cosmetic industry, for example, because of the value you are adding to that product, then you stand a chance. Another thing about product I need to say is, any product that you want to sell us to ensure your raw material can be sourced in Nigeria. So, for example, you can't be doing fashion and you want to export shirts. I mean, we learned the shirt from the white. You really cannot do better than them even though you are even not as efficient and, as them. But if you are sewing shirt with African fabric, that is it, that is it, that is it, that is it, that is it. Or you are sewing suit with African fabric, that is it, with nice combination. Those are the things you want to do. You want to put the African touch. You want to ensure that when you are sewing like that, it commands a better price because there is African touch. That African touch is what gives you your edge. That African touch is what determines your return on investment. If you are doing cosmetics, you are putting shea butter, cocoa butter, coconut oil, things that you can source right here in Nigeria. 
that a number of people that are producing similar products are brought you to source from here. If you are sourcing it here, there's no reason why you should not command a better price. In terms of your price, it should be better. Why? Because the raw material is sourced here. You are getting a lot, lot cheaper than people who will have to import it in just so much cost before they can produce their product. So the type of product, the value added to the product significantly affect the profitability and the return on investment. Significantly affect the profitability and the return on investment. Type of product. Number two, quality of the item. Peter Emeniki, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. Quality of the item. Quality. 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 In commodity trade, one of the things buyers do is to discount what they are paying you. They discount the amount they are paying you. Why are they discounting the amount they are paying you? They are discounting the amount they are paying you as an exporter simply because the quality of a commodity depends likely on the handling. And there is no way you won't have one issue or the other, which is why they have a range. For example, they will say that raw cashew nut, maximum, uh, maximum um, moisture, maybe 10%. Now they put maximum because they know you can't get, you can't be sure of the moisture, but you can ensure it doesn't go beyond 10%. It could be five, it could be six, it could be seven, it could be eight, it could be nine, it could be 10, and it could be 12. <laughs> so they say maximum amount of this. Why? It is commodity. You can't be exact. If it's value added product, we can be reasonably exact. Because we're adding value, we can measure, we can do a lot. But for commodity, you can't measure everything. You can only take sample. But for finished product, as you can actually know the quality of every item has been produced, you can check every item as they have been produced, depending on your operation. So if the quality is low, they buy at a lower price because they can still use it. Some factory will still use it if the quality is low. If the quality is high, of course, they buy at a high price. If the quality is low, they buy at a low price. Why? It's all about quality. So quality is a major factor in determining your return on investment. Quality is a major factor in determining your return on investment. And that's very important. That's very critical. Quality is a very important factor. Very, very serious factor in determining your return on investment. If it's commodity, if the quality is low, it will be discounted. So a bank funding an export transaction wants to be sure that this exporter understands well enough how to ensure he gets the right quality. Understand well enough how to ensure that he gets the right quality. Like I said, it cut across every kind of commodity. Number three, commodity season. Commodity season. If the exporter is into commodity trading, then his profitability will be high at the beginning of the season because of the low cost of procurement of merchant from merchant the probability decline as you approach the end of the season because at this point there will be scarcity and of course the local price is going to rise however the exporter can negotiate a new price a new export price to compensate for the hike in the local price what is this saying this is basically saying that the season, the seasonality of the item affects the quality, sorry, affects the pricing people are willing to make. At the beginning of the season, generally, prices are low because the product is in abundance. So you can export at a very, a lot better rate if anybody is doing cashew nuts. If you are not able to buy cashew nuts in February, I buy in the March, April, May. Of course, as you go into the year, the season of cashew nuts begin to 
uh, goods come to an end and the price goes up. The price goes up. The price goes up. So the seasonality is very important and is very, very critical. If you need to, if you want to have an idea of the season of different products, you can pick up the book, A to A, uh, Export Business Made Easy. Export Business Made Easy. Let me see if I can get a copy of the book for you. Yeah. Here is the book, Export Business Made Easy. Export Business Made Easy, second edition, first edition came out about six, seven years ago. And we are having the second edition. This book is 7,005 and it covers almost everything. Almost everything you need to know as far as export business is concerned. You know, the book is written in, a, in, in question and answer fashion. Look at the chapters in the book. Can you see the qu chapters are question? What is exportation? Why, why do we need to export? What do you see in Nigeria today? What can we export out of Nigeria? What is the status of the non export sector in Nigeria? What are the steps involved in a typical export process? What are the critical items in the export value chain? How do I plan my export project? How do I get buyers from abroad? How do I get funding for my export project? What are the inco terms? in foreign trade what are the payment methods in ex to, uh, to an export available to an exporter how do i source for available product what do i need to know about exportable commodities what do i need to know about port logistics um what are the documentation required for legal export in nigeria what are the export risks and how do i mitigate them how do I penetrate a new export market? What are the basic challenges that confront exporters in Nigeria? How do I process and package food? Package food product. These are export, I mean, um, this is a book that you can get to know and learn a lot about commodity export and finished product export in Nigeria. Now, I made reference to the book because I was talking about commodity season. And I wanted to show you something about commodity season. Because if you need to know about different commodity season in Nigeria, uh, let me just show you something very briefly. There's a chart I worked on some time ago that basically summarizes. Can you see? Can you see this chart? Commodity season. Now, that gives you commodity season for ginger, sesame seed, hibiscus, share nut, gum arabic, granite, cashew nut, garlic, yam, soya beans, cocoa, rubber, and coffee. These are exportable commodities from Nigeria. And you can find all of them in the book A to Z of export business. Sorry. Um, export business made easy rather second edition export business made easy edition. by the way it has an audio cd on abc of export now why am i showing you that so that if you are doing commodity i need to have an idea of what the season is to become easier for you to know deltos dms thank you very much for joining good morning then the next one is the position of buyer in the supply chain Position of buyer in the supply chain. Position of buyer in the supply chain. And even the position of the supplier or exporter in the supply chain. If you are selling products to a, the end user, you get better profitability. Adolphus Ali, thank you very much for joining. If you are selling products to the end user, you stand a chance of getting more uh, better pricing. If you are selling to the end user, if you are selling to a middleman, most likely you are not going to be able to get a better pricing. So your return on investment is also depend largely on the position of the supplier. You know, sometimes you are supplying to a, a wholesaler who is selling to 
You're supplying to a, a wholesaler who is selling to a retailer. We are supplying to a, 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 a distributor who is selling to a wholesaler who is selling to a retailer. So, whoever you are selling to, of course, if you are selling to a distributor or wholesaler or retailer, the volume is very, very high. Volume is very, very high. However, the profit also is affected. The profit also is affected. Why? Because they will buy at large volume, but they won't pay. They was because they need to resell. So the supplier, the, the position of your buyer in the supply chain determine your profit. The position of you as an exporter in the supply chain also determine the profit. Ajakaye, Ibijoke, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. Determine your profit. Your position determine your profit in the supply chain as an exporter. And you need to be mindful of this. It's very important for banker to know that the position of the exporter in the supply chain affects the product price. The closer the exporter is to the source of the goods, the lower the cost of procurement and the higher the likelihood of better return. And the higher the likelihood of better return. Then, cost element. Cost element, cost element, and inflation. In the course of this, we may most likely tomorrow, we'll be discussing some of the cost element in export transaction and how you can minimize your cost and be able to be more profitable and present a bankable proposal to the bank. But before then, you need to understand the fact that cost of the product, inflation, are all factors that determine your return on investment. The rate of inflation affects the cost of doing business, and this consequently affects the cost element in the export project, and this in turn affects the return on investment. This in turn affects the return on investment. Thank you very much for joining us again this morning. We have just concluded our conversation on the factor that can affect your return on investment. We're going to be drilling down more on this in the course of the week when we talk about the cost element in a typical export project, either by C or by A. This is A to Z of Export Business Financing, part 14, brought to you by 3T Impact Trade Academy on the Import Export Platform, Facebook Live. And like I often say, this happens daily, 6 a.m. every day, and sorry, 8 a.m. every day, and 6 p.m. every day. Thank you very much for listening again today. Have a great week ahead, and have a great day at work. See you in the evening. Bye for now.